Yo, what's going on guys? Arex here and today I want to talk about Total War Warhammer 3. More specifically, five things you need to know about this new title. If you guys are Warhammer fans, if you've played number one and two, let me know in the comments down below. And of course, if you are looking forward to number three. Don't forget to drop a like on this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you guys have been enjoying the content lately because we've got plenty more stuff coming your way. I also want to give a massive shout out to Sega for very kindly sponsoring this video. But to begin with, first things first, there is a new prologue campaign. Prologue is a new Total War experience. It's perfect for brand new players so if you've never played one of these before and sometimes it can seem a little daunting you're like do I need to have you know experienced the previous titles to jump in this is a great place to get started it's also good for those of you requiring a sort of refresher course in the mechanics of the game if maybe it's been a while since you played one or two basically it's a great way to ease into the game and the new story because often in these types of games there are so many mechanics so many things to consider and if you jump in completely blind it can be quite a while before you really feel that you get your flow down so the prologue campaign is a great way to uh, ease you in you then have the new Forge of Souls campaign. This is a sandbox recreation of the old world and the realms of chaos as you attempt to save or kill a dying god with every turn. You build your empire, you grow your economy, command your troops, take care of your allies, exploit your foes, and you of course please the damned gods. A single campaign can last up to 100 to 150 turns of gameplay, so they are pretty meaty, and like past Total War campaigns, you begin by finishing early objectives, taking settlements, dabbling in diplomacy, and building an empire around their starting province. Urson, the bear god of Kislev, will periodically roar in agony, creating rifts to appear around the map for a set duration. These rifts can then be interacted with in a variety of ways. You can traverse dimensions to one of the Chaos God's domains within the Realm of Chaos. You can traverse rifts to another area within the Mortal Realm, and you can close the rift, thus stopping Chaos Corruption from spreading and demonic armies from invading. Players need to visit each realm, navigate throughout their nightmarish domains, and take the souls of the demon prince, inhabiting their mighty fortresses. Only once a soul from each of the great powers has been retrieved will players be presented with the opportunity of facing Ursan's captor in a battle to seal the fate of the dying gods. Domination campaign victory is also available if you prefer. Additionally, Warhammer 3 now offers large scale multiplayer, much larger than before. Now you and up to seven friends, eight total, can play with the added option of playing cooperatively, head-to-head, -head, or one of the new multiplayer campaign scenarios that are available, something Rotten in Kislev, or Darkness and Disharmony. So, if multiplayer is your preferred method of playing, which in these kind of games is definitely mine, then this will give you plenty of stuff to sink your teeth into. Additionally, on top of that, there are eight new races to try. There is the Tsardom of Kislev, known as the Realm of the Ice Queen. It's the most northern civilization within the Old World. It includes units such as Elemental Bears, Ice Leopards, Ice Witches, and even Bear Cavalry. You have the Demons of Chaos. The Ungle Prince has given himself up entirely in exchange for the ruinous blessings of the Chaos Gods and Ascendancy of Demonhood, with a variety of demon units and demonic gifts that let you equip body parts and weapons. You have Grand Cathay, travellers returning from the eastern reaches to tell tales of jade cities and golden pagodas, including units like the Serpentine Dragons, Monolithic Stone Sentinels, and Flying Sky Junks that rain firepower from above. The Ogre Kingdoms are a race of large, tough, and vicious humanoid ogres. Units include a big variety of different armed and mounted ogres. Korn, playing as minions of the Blood God, who does not care from where the blood flows so long as it is done in his name. This race has a variety of demon units with Scarbrand and the Exiled leading the charge. The Nurgle, also known as the Plague Lord, he is the god of disease, decay, death, and degradation. Playing with the Kugath Plaguefather as your lord, and with the large bonuses to Nurgling units, you will be unleashing the most lethal of diseases. The Slanish, the youngest of the Chaos Gods, those who serve are consumed by their own dark passions. Playing as Ankare, the Keeper of Secrets, an ability to seduce enemy units or summon disciple armies, none can resist temptation. And then finally, Tsientch, I believe that's how you pronounce it. Some of these names are wild to pronounce by the way, but the Changer of Ways and Chaos God of Magic, Evolution, Manipulation and Trickery. Playing with Kairos Fateweaver as your lord and the ability to manipulate the winds of magic, they are a powerful force. In addition to this, you also have new and improved diplomacy. In past games, it has been a bit of a guessing game when it comes to balancing deals with the AI, meaning you either underoffer and fail a deal, or you overoffer and come out short. With new options, diplomacy is looking much more beneficial, including recruiting units from allied armies. You can have balanced deals with the click of a button, balance a deal with the required goal to secure the deal. You have allied recruitment, where you can build outposts in allied territory to recruit units of the allied armies. 
You've got get off my land, which is uh, basically get off my lawn. I love it. It's a click of a button when enemies trespass on your land to allow them to leave with repercussions. And you have threaten with new threaten options to strengthen your rank over both enemies and allies. So as you can begin to see, if you like the world of Warhammer, if you enjoy these kind of games, then uh, Warhammer 3 definitely has some exciting new things to jump into. So for the time being, that's a quick look at some of the stuff that awaits you. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys have any questions. Let me know what you're looking forward to. And also let me know if you plan to play Warhammer 3, which race are you going to be going with first? Also, be sure to check out this video on the channel if you guys want to catch more from us.